Simon's new job. Simon was grumbling in the sheds. That den, he snorted. I knew he'd be the death of me. The shed master walked across the line to calm him down. I've lived through the war and being replaced. Now my duties are being taken over by a shoebox on wheels, he exclaimed. Please, Simon, calm down. I'm sure we'll find you some other work, soothed the shed master. Rubbish, hissed Simon. I'm to be put in the scrapyard thanks to that diesel. British Railways won't want me now. Fred was taking on water. He could see the commotion and wondered what would happen to the little shunter. Do you think Simon will be scrapped now? He asked his driver. Simon is a good engine. They'll find him some work. But the driver paused. Hopefully. This didn't fill Fred with much confidence and continued to worry about his friend for the rest of the day. A couple of days had passed. With Den now shunting the wagons in the yard, Simon had nothing to do. Every day he watched the other engines leave for work. They tried to bring a smile back onto his face, but Simon just seethed with rage. Surplus to requirement, that's what I am, he huffed indignantly. As winter turned to spring, Simon was moved to the sidings by the sheds. He hated it. Without a fire, he became cold and drowsy. He felt very uncomfortable as he hadn't been oiled and cleaned for quite some time. The shed master would always check he was all right. Simon constantly asked if he would steam again. The reply was always, soon. This annoyed Simon deeply and soon he stopped asking. But one day a fitter approached Simon and checked him all over. He was joined by two cleaners and a firelighter. He's got enough water for the time being, announced the firelighter. We'll fill him up before he goes. Simon was confused. Go where? he asked. You'll see, smiled the fitter. The shedmaster arrived to see Simon smiling once again. How are you, Simon? the shedmaster asked kindly. Never better, chuffed Simon. What's happening? You're going to be helping Jimmy at the station. It's the Easter holidays and special trains have been scheduled. Jimmy needs help, and if you behave like a good engine, then perhaps something better may follow. Simon was watered and cold, and steamed joyfully away, hoping for the best. When Simon arrived, he was greeted by Jimmy, and the two tank engines began happily chatting away. Their conversation was cut short as it was time to shunt William's passenger train. Watch me first, then you'll know what to do, Jimmy advised. Jimmy collected the coaches and gently pushed them into the platform. The coaches seemed to glide along the rails as they were brought to a careful stop. Jimmy made it look easy. He was uncoupled from the train and quickly made a dash for a siding. William shortly followed, coupled up, and when the guard blew his whistle, he steamed away. Simon smiled. Easy, he called out. Nothing to it. But he said it to himself. The next train to organise was the Irish Mail heading for Hollyhead. Simon steamed dutifully away to collect the coaches. When he buffered up, he was taken by surprise. They were a lot heavier than what he first thought. Simon had shunted coaches before a long time ago, but they were small wooden-bodied coaches, not long steel carriages as big as him. As he slowly began to pull them to the station, his wheels slipped fiercely. The train was moving, but only just. I can do it, I can do it, I can do it, he panted wearily, but he couldn't. As the train began to slither over the points, Simon lost control of his slip and couldn't pull the coaches in. Time after time he kept spinning, determined not to give up. Young train spotters watched with interest as Simon had to admit defeat. Arthur, who was to pull the train, pushed the coaches to the platform and passengers began boarding. Never mind, old chap, puffed Arthur sympathetically. It could happen to any engine. But it didn't, muttered Simon to himself. He was very cross and felt humiliated as he watched Arthur depart with the train. That evening the engine said nothing. William had been teased by Simon for struggling with brake fans and he desperately wanted to joke about Simon's incident. But wisely, it didn't seem tactful. The next day Simon was alone in the sheds again. Jimmy had been ordered to shunt the coaches alone. The shedmaster arrived to speak to Simon. Well done on your brave efforts yesterday. Shunting coaches is a lot harder than what it looks, he said. Simon sighed. 
I guess I'm not too old to learn a lesson or two. The Shedmaster smiled. The railway recognises your, um, capabilities and are sending you away to be a dockyard engine. Simon was puzzled, but pleased. Oh, um, uh, thank you, sir. He never thought of being a dockyard shunter before. The engine that worked there is being withdrawn, so you will take its place. It's a job you're used to. The only difference is it's by the sea. The Shedmaster added, Don't think you'll be on your own. There'll be plenty of engines to talk to, and Fred does collect his fish train from the harbour there. Simon smiled at his new occupation. Sounds wonderful, sir. When the day came for Simon to leave, he left a smiling faces, for it wasn't really a goodbye. He settled into his new row perfectly and enjoys himself at the docks. He tells his life stories to engines and befriended Ken, the standard form mogul, who once visited his shed. He's never lonely and often has catch-ups with Fred, who collects his fish train and tells him the news from the shed. Simon still misses Jimmy, Ivert and even William, but was happy with the work he has been given. I've lived through war, being replaced and even the diesels. Yes, he said triumphantly, I've lived. And with that his old eyes twinkled as he dozed happily in the evening sun.